right, before the break, you heard from Mike Davis speaking out in defense of Trump. And now we got the other side of the story with our friend, political strategist Kevin Walling, who's up late with me tonight here on The Final Five to talk about this and anything else that may pop into our minds in the next Slow six news week. Nothing was really to talk nothing about. Happened uh -huh. here. <laughs> we, knew it, we knew something was going to come down this week. It came out last night, obviously. Uh, what went through your mind as you, as you saw all this news coming out of Georgia? Uh, well, certainly the, the, the level of research uh, interviews, uh, the, the, the kind of damning nature of uh, this uh, indictment uh, that was well-researched, well put together, the fact that there are so many uh, indicted conspiracy, mm -hmm. conspiracy uh, folks involved in this RICO uh, uh, charge, which is, you know, stems from how we used to go after the mob, interestingly enough, uh, is what kind of struck me the most about this indictment. Well, of course, and, and Rudy Giuliani's in with that, who, when he was U.S. Attorney in New York, you, he was pioneered the use of RICO uh, when it came to fighting gangs and, and things along those lines in New York. And yet you have people like him, you have Jenna Ellis, you have, have John Eastman, names that My have My old been, buddy Jenna Ellis. I, she and I, and I used to debate all the time she, on Fox. And she's been on this show before, too. Yeah. I, I think what's fascinating about how this is all playing out, though, is, is the number, as you said, the number of names out there and, and the fact it's not just one or two people, it's 19 in this indictment. It really is. And again, you look at uh, you know criminal procedure in, uh, in Georgia. Georgia's one of two states where the governor doesn't have pardon power, yeah. right? Uh, so Donald Trump, even if he is elected uh, come 2024, can't pardon himself on state-level crimes. Um, and there is no, you know, th th there's every indication that some of these people are likely to flip, uh, just like the mob did mm -hmm. with RICO charges, just because, uh, you know, the president can't, former president can't spend a, a fortune uh, on the co-defendants in this case. You know what was interesting, though, is, is we were hearing Mike Davis speaking a little bit earlier. Uh, one thing that he brought up, and he was he was pointing out specific legal terminology or legal, which again you can disagree on the fact whether or not it's a it's a it's a case for or against the indictments. But uh, the one thing the former president has been doing, he's not citing legal precedent. He's going after F Fonnie Willis. He's saying that she slept with gang members, that she was involved with the Black Panthers. And I think that really speaks to where we know the former president's going to going to where his defense is coming from here. Well, and I think what you're seeing is the former president engage in a media strategy, in a communication strategy, and not necessarily in a legal strategy, because he's giving all of his lawyers headaches across all these different indictments with his attacks on the different federal judges, yeah. with the attacks on the special uh, prosecutor, which is not smart, sound legal uh, measures, but more uh, a public engagement strategy that's going to come back and bite him, I think. Does it change any minds, though? Because I think in the end, he's giving people what they want, and he's leading the polls. He said time and time again, he needed the fourth indictment to sew up that, 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 that nomination. He certainly has that fourth indictment now. Well, again, certainly I, I think this, this case will play out differently if there is a camera allowed in yeah. the courtroom. Of course, that, that has to happen before the 24 election. There's not an indication that it actually will take mm -hmm. place before then. Uh, but certainly, you know, the more that Americans hear that call, you know, that he placed to Brad Raffensperger, yeah. demanding he find well, extra votes. 780. I think uh, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty point. clear case. And yeah. I think similar to the federal case on January 6th, that has a visceral uh, reminder in people's minds of what that day was like, mm -hmm. especially for folks living here in the sure. DMV, yeah. um, which is a little bit more, uh, I think, serious uh, in that uh, uh, we all remember that, and it's different from the, you know, say the the uh, the hush money payment issue or the the uh, classified document case. Well, a lot of people looked at the the hush money payment case and said, you know, that really doesn't have the legs that that, that I think some of these other might do down the line. But one thing people are saying that the pivot for many people who are supporting President, uh, former President Trump, is saying, why are we going after him when now uh, Jim, Jim Comer and the House Oversight Committee have this alleged evidence? They say we haven't seen the evidence, but they <laughs> yeah. they, they have these allegations uh, that. That, that President Biden might be on the take, and why aren't we opening an impeachment inquiry on that? Uh, day in, day out, uh, James Comer, God love him, is out there talking about bribery, talking about all kinds of things with the Biden family without producing one shred of evidence uh, as part of that. If you, the Republicans want to impeach somebody, they can impeach Hunter Biden, uh, you know, based on the evidence. Yeah, I don't think he has a shot at the 2024 nomination. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but again, there's no links whatsoever, uh, you know, that the Republicans have been after for months in the majority, uh, you know, coming up almost on a year, and we haven't produced any kind of evidence that we've seen. So we have two, uh, well, we have the indictments in New York, we have D.C., we have, we have, uh, we have, 
Georgia, I'm losing track at this <laughs> point. But when you look at the cities, the, the, the argument against these indictments, once again, has been Democratic cities, Democratic prosecutors, Democratic jury pools. Well, unfortunately for the former president, he committed most of his crimes uh, in those cities. And in this uh, American legal system that we're under, you're generally charged where you commit those crimes, whether it be the, the classified document case that will actually take place in Florida mm -hmm. or the January 6 cases that are proceeding, uh, that are taking place here in D.C. Well, it all de depends on where the crimes are done but also you're also innocent until proven guilty, and we have four cases to Absolutely. see where that all shakes out there. Kevin Walling, always good to see you. Thanks for good coming in, man. Thanks, we'll See you again. And the final five is back after this.